hello everyone, my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to today's video which is my end of summer book haul. acquiring books and the way I do this is a few books every month rather than going on big shopping sprees because I do have a book budget. I bring this up in almost any video that has anything to do with purchasing books or gaining books in some way and it's gotten to a point where it's been a few months and I've acquired a few books. Um, so I'm just going to do a haul of what I've acquired so far but before I get started on the books there are a couple bookish items that I have also picked up recently that I wanted to share with you. The first being tabs. So I am not someone who tags books. I have never tabbed a book unless it was for a school assignment, but even that I haven't done since middle school. Most books that I've had to read in high school or college, I have done some other system of note taking. So I, I haven't bought tabs, but last year I read a book and I was like, there are so many things that I want I want to remember, like things that stuck out to me. And I started writing down the page number and kind of where on the page it was on my phone in the notes app and I was like, this is literally why people tab books, is to go back and look at these specific scenes, lines, characters, whatever. So I finally caved in and I bought just a generic, really simple tab from like Home Depot or something like that. But what I liked about these ones, so obviously I got different colors for different things, but I like that it's not all solid, it actually is clear. So I can kind of put it over the words a little bit or right on to there without like blocking anything, but getting very specifically where I am wanting to tab. I, I haven't opened the package yet and I'm still kind of hesitant because I, I like keeping my books in like new condition as brand new as I can keep them, as clean and as untouched as I can keep them. So I'm scared to start tabbing because it kind of takes away from that. But I know there are some books that I just really, really want to, um, especially thinking of when I eventually binge read all of Sarah J Mass. Heads up, that is a video idea I have. I'm going to acquire all of her books and then read through them all. And I will vlog the experience, so don't you worry. Um, so I thought this would be really good for those books, but again, I'm not going to tab every book I read. I'm only going to tab books where I'm like, this is something I actually want to remember. Not not even just like for reviews, but just something that really hits me, you know, using them sparingly. And then the other non-book, bookish item I purchased was a book sleeve! I am so happy I've been wanting to buy one of these for so long. This one says, Wicked are the ways of women, especially a witch, which is a quote from the Serpent and Dove trilogy. I love that trilogy. I get it, the second book was not great and the third book was alright. But I still love the first book and just the whole concept of the series and the characters enough to buy a book sleeve off of it. It's nice because uh, it has a little snap at the top so it can snap closed. Um, but I use this really big purse that I can easily fit books in but the books would get damaged so I really like having this to protect them when I put books in my purse if I'm going somewhere and I think I might have some time to read so I am just so happy. Plus I don't have a lot of book merch items in general. I just, I haven't spent my book budget on that because I'd rather just buy more books. This was my July book budget purchase so very worth it, very worth it in my opinion. So the first one I actually got from a free little library down the road and it's Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book but it's like the graphic novel adaptation. It's the first volume. I don't own any of Neil Gaiman's and I loved the graveyard book so this is kind of more of a placeholder until I can actually purchase the graveyard book itself. Um, I just saw it for free and I was interested in it plus I would love to see some of the images in here so I've already read the graveyard book like I said. I just thought I'd have this on my shelf for a little while and then when I do replace it I'll put this back in another free little library. I didn't have this on my list of books that I've bought recently but I'm pretty sure I've bought it recently enough. Like I don't think I've hauled this book yet 
that's Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. I don't own any of Leigh Bardugo's other books. I don't own the original Grisha trilogy or anything like that. Um, but I have read the trilogy. I have not read this duology nor the other duology set of books. I'm not sure. But this is the next book that I want to read. So I thought, hey, it's pretty cheap. I, I, I'll, I'll get it because I eventually want to own all of those books. But I figured I'd start with the books I haven't read yet so I can sit down and read them. Though I am about to give this to a friend to borrow. But I trust this friend. I do. I actually trust this friend. Which, if you're a friend that I trust to give you books, that is a high honor. Anyway, I'm sure you all can relate to that, but that is not the point of this video. The next book I have is The Night and Its Moon by C.J. Piper. This is a self-published book from a TikToker who published her own book. C.J. Piper, her entire channel is all about like mythology and folklore and things like that. Like that's literally what her degree is in and she shows us her degree in every video. I love watching her videos. She's so much fun. Just her energy and vibes are just so uniquely her and I love it. Um, and I'm a big fan of mythology and folklore. It's one of my favorite subgenres of fantasy to read. Um, so my friend actually got me this for my birthday and I believe she's actually going to be picked up by a publisher and they're gonna like re-edit the book and republish it. So I'm really happy to have the self-published version right now to read, but I do want to buy the newly published version when it gets traditional publishing. At least I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. I'm pretty sure I heard that right. And I also was really excited because our, there is bisexual rep in this and the main characters are orphans and I assume there's mythology, so it ticks all the boxes. I'm excited for it. It's, it's a bit of a chonker, but that'll be okay, I think. And then the next two books aren't like the same as all the rest. And I, I wanted books on these subjects, but I got these books specifically because they are gorgeous. And they go together. I have Celtic myth, myths and tales, and I have Irish fairy tales. So these are extremely similar, obviously, like the embossing is very similar and the titles and they are, they don't really have authors, they're just kind of a combination of different fairy tales, folklores, um, stories from Celtic mythology and Irish mythology and there is like, there is a lot of overlap with heroes and stories and uh, creatures and whatnot, but there are some slight differences and there are stories in this one that aren't in this one and vice versa because Irish and Celtic are not necessarily the same thing. The Celtic are a group of people that actually immigrated to Ireland and have uh, stayed there versus Ireland is its own set country that has native people and so while they're very similar because their history entwines for a very long time they are different so i did want to purchase both both of these i am kind of using these as more immediate proof of my research for the book that i am very slowly writing uh because that has to do with irish mythology so I just love reading these kinds of stories whenever I have some spare time or I feel uh, inspired to read them or write. Now I'm moving on to my last stack here. They're little stacks. I will say there is one other book that I purchased that I don't currently have. That is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I bought this in Michigan, but Silvia Moreno-Garcia is actually going to my local library for a little presentation, Q&A, and book signing, but she was doing it the day we drove back to Minnesota, so I was not able to be there. So my dear, wonderful mother <laughs> took my book and uh, went to the Q&A and presentation, listened, took some notes, and got the book signed for me. So kind of her to do. Um, so it's it's signed to me, uh, always read, always write, always uh, imagine, I believe is the quote she put in there. So my mom will be mailing that to me shortly. <laughs> I cannot wait for it to arrive, but I didn't want to put this book haul off any further as we're going into spooky season very soon. So I want to start gearing towards that, which it's also perfect timing because it's... So Sylvia Moreno-Garcia is the author of Mexican Gothic, but she has many other books in many different genres. But I think the daughter of Dr. Moreau 
kind of goes back into her more gothic kind of darker style writing uh it is based off of a classic dr moreau with her own like mexican feminist twist on it so i think it'll be good to read the spooky season so i wanted to include it in this haul i also got for the throne which i mentioned in quite a few videos this past summer i mean you know like the three videos i filmed this summer i am currently reading it it's the second book in the duology by hannah witten I am so excited to finish this. I'm hoping to finish it in September. Spoiler alert for my September TBR. I loved the first book and so far I am really liking the second one. But we'll see. Then I got, surprisingly, My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. I did not think this was going to be the first Tessa Bailey book that I bought. I honestly thought it was going to be window shopping from like this past Christmas. Um, but it's a really short, very adult romance where our first second grade teacher kindergarten teacher uh is obsessed with true crime and she ends up finding a dead body in her airbnb and she falls for the brooding bounty hunter grumpy sunshine i've actually already read this the reason i bought it was because i was doing a buddy read with some people on twitter for it and so i wanted to make sure i had the book i had access to it and that i could read it um and i really liked it but that'll come up in my wrap up whenever I get around to filming that as well. It was a great summer read. Yeah. <laughs> now my most re recent purchases were The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. This is the second book in the Gilded Ones trilogy. I think that's just what the trilogy is called. It came out this past summer and I cannot wait to get around to it sometime soon, but I would highly recommend uh, The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. And then the last book that I have on this list I was so excited for. I've been anticipating this release ever since I heard that it was a thing. And that is Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin. This, so Rachel Griffin wrote Nature of Witches, which I absolutely adored. So this is her other, her newest book. It takes place in the same world with the same, like, witch magic concept but following completely different characters and a completely different storyline. So you don't have to read The Nature of Witches to... Uh, be able to read this book however I haven't read this yet but I think the nature of witches probably is a good starting place just because it's more of an intro to witches and their magic but I'm really excited to read this also the nature of which is had a beautiful uh, like naked book and uh, so does this one I love it so much it's just absolutely gorgeous it blows my breath away it, oh, I love it so much so I knew I had to get it as soon as possible, and again, this will probably be on my upcoming TBRs because I am so excited. It was such a good fall read. It's very seasonal, but yeah, I'm so excited. Anyway, so those are all of the books that I have reaches, reachesly. <laughs> those are all the books that I have recently purchased or gained from one way or another in these past summer months. I believe it was like May through August, so I'm probably going to end up doing more seasonal hauls just because of the nature of my book buying budget. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested, please subscribe. I post on Sundays and Wednesdays and I am going back to that posting schedule now that my life has settled a little bit more. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below some of the favorite books that you have bought this past summer and whether you've read them or not or if you'll be saving them for next summer. I do also have bookish social media down below so you can go ahead and follow me there and get more instant updates on what I've been reading. But until we see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.